Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, Ambrose Blowfield back again here from the Sales Mastery Company. And it's my privilege to bring you a part two to the part one, which is how do we as a sales team, as a company, create this sales engine that's going to keep producing success just like the All Blacks do on the pitch for over a century. Now, last time we were together, when we talked about part one, we talked a lot about the culture. I will touch on that again because it's such an integral part of the team's success long term. But also, I'm going to talk some practical things from a leadership perspective. So strap yourself in. If you're a business owner, if you're a sales manager, or if you're simply the senior salesperson and you want to take more of a leadership role within sales, let's look at the part two of how to sell like the All Blacks. Now, hopefully, if you've interacted with us in social media or through our email sequences, you will have got access to this particular workbook. This, of course, is the part two workbook of Sell Like the All Blacks. Inside front cover, there's a welcome note for myself and the team. Just give you a bit of background about the fact that we spent the last 18 years coaching and training over 15,000 businesses and helping to make over $2 billion. We've just got our first booking to go to Argentina in person, which takes it to our 11th country in person. And we've exceeded well over 20 countries in the online space as well. So today's session is 10 or 15 minutes to under explain and allow you to understand some clear takeaways of how the All Blacks stay dominant in the field in the same way your business team or your sales team want to be dominant in their field and make sure that you've got some takeaways as the senior salesperson or as the manager or as the business owner to implement straight away into your sales team in particular. Now, the reason why I'm focusing today in particular around the sales team is it is easier because they're so results driven like a sporting team is to analyze and look at the All Blacks in the context of sales. In saying that, the cultural aspect should apply to your finance team, your operations team, your marketing team, and every other leadership team that you've got in your organization. But today, I really want to focus in on sales. Now, obviously, David Kirk uh, led the team well to win their first World Cup in 1987. It was the very first time that the world of professional sport for rugby did have a World Cup. And they went and hosted it at Eden Park here in Auckland and managed to win it. The challenge for the All Blacks was that from 1987, despite from that period to this period today, the All Blacks being the number one team in the world consistently for the vast majority of the time, they were actually unable to win the World Cup for a further 24 years, which led to some real soul searching worries about the analyzing the culture, analyzing the team and analyzing those practices. And I covered some of those in part one. I'm going to cover it again in part two. Firstly, your sales team needn't have a small vision. I understand that with goal setting, we need to be smart, meaning some of our goals need to be achievable and realistic. That's one year to the next. But I was recently coaching a business in Sydney and we we're talking about a five year goal. And one of the rules we set up for a five year goal was anything is possible in the five year goal for most business teams. You could acquire businesses, get additional investment, get rid of product lines, take on new product lines, launch to new continents, never mind new states and territories. The All Blacks have a vision to be the most dominant team in the history of the world across any team sport any international team sport. So maybe not baseball because it's more likely at a localized level in North America and certainly the US. But again, in a team sport globally, the vision is huge. That creates a bigger purpose. When you're training for the All Blacks, when you want to be part of the All Blacks, when you're coaching for the All Blacks, when you're washing the kit for the All Blacks, you know the vision is enormous. I'm not just getting us ready for the next game. We're trying to play the next game in such a way that we get seen 100 years from today as the most dominant team in the history of the world. At the same time, clear expectations are put on our team members, not just how will you perform on the pitch, which in the sales context is how are you going to perform in a meeting with a customer? But what are you going to do in the weeks or months running up to that? Obviously, every player has got their own personal nutritional plan simply in the off season, their own personal fitness plan in the off season. The expectations are clear. Is every member of your team clear on what they need to do every week to achieve an amazing outcome? Next up, you've got to build the right team. I talked about culture and values last week. This is something that the All Blacks very much assess about. I won't use the words and language that they use around that, but essentially they have a no idiots policy. So if somebody is amazingly talented, amazingly big, amazingly fast, amazingly strong, incredibly gifted, not that I particularly give into that. I believe people apply gifts, but they don't necessarily just get them and don't have to apply them. But ultimately, no matter how skillful this person is, no matter how much of an asset they've used for the team, 
if they don't fit the ethos, as in the values of the team, they don't get recruited. And if they join the team by accident, they recruited the wrong person. But ultimately, they're not going to fit long term to the values. They get gone. And this is the whole point here. You know, as it says there, bullet points number two and three, you need to get the right people on the bus and in the right seats according to their skills, their ambitions, their drive, and even their personality profile, something we test people on called a behavioral profile. But the wrong people need to be moved seats, moved teams, or moved out. Now, that's something that's hard to do because the bulk of our clients around the world for the last 18 years have been small to medium family run businesses. In fact, well over 95% of them have been that. So therefore, they have a real challenge because it could be a friend or a family member we're talking about this about. But I'm really sorry if you've got the wrong fit in terms of attitude, the wrong fit in terms of work ethic, the wrong fit in terms of values. You've got to get them at least out of your sales team. If you want to hide them as a part time forklift driver, provided they're safe and have the skills and qualifications to do so, hide them back there. They won't affect everybody with their mood, their fluctuations and their ambitions. Obviously, people need mental support. I'm not dismissing that. I'm not saying harden up because actually mental health is a really important thing in the world right now, especially off the back of the last three years of the onslaught and the worry that people have had. But the fact remains is sales feed the company. Without sales, there is no customer. Without any customer, there's zero purpose for our organization. That doesn't say the sales team is more important than the other team. I'm just saying they're a critical cog in the wheel. And if you've got a wrong person in the wrong seat or somebody who shouldn't be in the sales department, get them out fast. Likewise, I do want to comment on the first point as well. Age is nothing and age is not a barrier. If you could see the start of my career, how youthful we were working at the Procter & Gamble organization, managing million pound sales territories from scratch with no admin support and no mobile phone, you'll realize young people can sell well. I see a number of incredible school leavers, 18, 19 years old, straight into role of sales. Ideally, we'd have done a 12 week program, which is something we've helped them with in the past, you know, running up to the role. But even if they haven't hit the ground running, good training, good mentorship, good development, boom, they can outsell a senior person within a couple of years, maybe three years of the push. Age is nothing. Age is nothing to learn a new school. And also age is nothing at the other end of the spectrum. You can teach an old, old dog new tricks, both in terms of a dog itself and in terms of an older human who's been established. It takes longer, but it, everybody's teachable. Please, champions never rest. This is an important thing for us to get into every sales team in terms of kind of your mantra, your ethos and your values. Winning matters. Without winning, we have no customers. Without customers, we have no business. So we've got to get used to the fact that not only do we need to win this week, this month, this quarter, this year, we want to win every year, even though, like the All Blacks, you're going to lose a few matches. So long as you learn, so long as you grow, that's okay. Very important. In the All Blacks, you have to break it down and go, well, we need to make sure that once you join the team, you become further better at tackling people, kicking the ball, running with the ball, passing the ball both ways, kicking off both feet and doing your core role, such as jumping in the line out, pushing in the scrum or running as a back. So you've got to learn all of those things in sales. Your team development, your responsibility for your team is that they develop their business interests, their business understanding, their industry understanding, competitor understanding, product understanding, benefits understanding, value proposition, and then the skills around preparing for meetings, preparing for calls, running meetings, running calls, presenting the value proposition, positive account management, proactive account management, negotiation skills when required, customer service skills to listen. I mean, that's just the start of it. Typically, when we train salespeople and sales managers say to us, how much does my team need to learn? At the very least, we want to train them for two years, normally three years, to cover everything for us to go, yes, they've got it. And that's assumed they learn it first time. What the All Blacks know and any sales manager around the world worth their salt will realize is you do need to repeat the same lessons. Whether it's you doing it in a coaching setting or you doing it in a team session or bringing in an expert from outside or extra content outside, it is through repetition that champions become champions. You don't just make it there and stagnate and say, those are the skills we need for the future. This absolutely is relevant to the sales teams in particular. Two things happen in your marketplace. Change from the customer, change from the opposition. Eventually, your opposition is going to wise up and get smarter at how they do it, which thus means the standards you had last year are probably not good enough this year. 
equally. Your customers are going to get more cynical, more judgmental, more demanding, and have higher levels of expectations moving forward. Therefore, you need to keep raising the bar in your service and your professionalism, your preparation, and how you lead meetings and conversations with the customers because they're getting better and they're expecting more. At the same time, if somebody fits your team, make sure they align fully, as it says there at the last point at the top half of the page. But the point I want to make also is we've all got to demonstrate a growth mindset, particularly if we're a leader. The growth mindset, as Carol Dweck and others have talked about for many, many years of their research, is somebody who believes that with hard work and application, everything's possible. Now, I personally believe that despite the fact that a seven foot six basketball player is unlikely to become a jockey and a four foot six jockey is unlikely to become a basketball player. There are obviously physical attributes that help people do certain professional sports. But the fact remains is everybody has an idea. Every customer conversation gives us the opportunity to learn. Every conversation with every member of your team gives you a chance to learn. Even the school leaver, even the intern working part time in the holidays, listen, ask questions. The All Blacks have a culture where if anybody suggests something, it is valued and respected to the same level as if the coach or overall team manager actually said it. It doesn't matter if you're 18. It doesn't matter if you're 28. It doesn't matter if you're 58. Age doesn't matter. We can always learn from everybody. The last few things I want to cover for today as we start to wrap up. There's a psychology that salespeople face just like the All Blacks face, which is when things don't go right. When things go wrong, you go one of two ways. You either go into what the All Blacks refer to as a redhead, an emotional response, not red hair color, but just red mist in your head, where you actually, you know what, you're starting to think, this game's going to run away from us. We have no hope of winning. They've just scored against us, and you spiral. Just like a salesperson misses out on a big client, loses their biggest customer, and starts to spiral. That's redhead thinking. And Kerry Evans, who's a forensic psychiatrist, has done amazing work for the last 20 years with the All Blacks and to instill it into the Blackburn women's team as well about trying to shift people from a redhead, emotional, responsive, angry, guilt-ridden type situation where things go wrong and moving them more to that blue head scenario by looking for some physiological changes in the case of the former All Blacks captain, Kieran Reid, would look to the farthest point of the stadium. Some people stamp their feet. Some people clap their hands. Some people put their arms around each other, breathe in together, breathe out together, and let's get out of the emotion and into our logic, cognitive thinking, and think about what do I need to do next? I need to secure the ball off the kickoff. I need to catch it. I need to pass it. We need to kick it. We need to exit. Whatever that happens to be. Get ourselves out of that red. So if you're the sales leader, think about that dealing with failure situation. We've got this incredible tool. It's about two, $250 to analyze people against 18 different topics. And what I love using that when I work in-house with a business, we typically gift that to people because I want to see who they are. One of those 18 topics is how does that person deal with failure? How easy is it for them to take it on the chin and move on? Or do they get emotionally wrapped up? Equally, I want to know the emotional distance. Is the salesperson able to sell professionally without being emotionally tied to the emotions of the customer? If somebody's all emotional, not to say having emotions is the wrong thing, not to say having passion is the wrong thing. If someone's overly emotional when failing, it'll get them down, it'll drain their energy, drain their motivation, and it could easily drain their confidence. The other aspect I want to comment on, something I do not see enough in businesses, is the constant strive that the All Blacks have to develop future leaders. The example of the All Blacks, for example, is way back in 2015, Sam Kane, who was not to be the next All Blacks captain, but the next after the next All Blacks captain, got to manage and lead a game as captain in the Rugby World Cup in the UK, knowing at best if he stayed fit, unfortunately he's been pretty unfit the last few years, but if he stayed fit, six years later or five years later would probably be his first chance to become the All Blacks captain. They were already developing as a leader. In a team of 15 with eight people on the bench, so 23 people, they have one captain, two vice captains, and multiple leadership team members. And again, age is not a factor in leadership for the All Blacks, nor should it be in your team. Maybe you need an accountability coach in your team that doesn't have to be the sales manager. Maybe somebody who's the presentations coach, someone who's a champion of this area, someone who's a champion of follow-up, someone who's a champion of service, someone who's a champion of account manager, someone who's a champion of new business. Develop leaders. Don't be scared they're going to take your role. The more you develop, the more you're going to be able to push up into more senior roles or more strategic roles. So please be prepared to develop leaders within your team like the All Blacks do. So in summary, I want you to create a bigger vision for your team. 
and for your organization within sales. I want you to develop the right team and get rid of the wrong people. I want you to develop that mindset that is blue head, clear thinking, leaders as well as champions, and also develop the right processes to support that so you can sustain it and scale it as we do in our sales academy. And talking of our sales academy, if you want to know more about that, how for 1500 US dollars a month, we can help keep your team on track, motivate you to achieve amazing results. We're, results, we're producing incredible results right around the world with our sales academy. Simply click on the link in the workbook or send us an email to admin at salesmasterycompany.com. We'd love to talk to you about the sales academy or the other amazing courses we've got, whether it's the $100 a month sales manager fundamentals course or whatever we've got. I'm sure we can help you grow. Please implement today's session. Please share this video with others. We want sales teams to be the driving force in any business around the world. I've been Ambrose Blowfield with the Sales Mastery Company. And as always, take action.